and welcome to my part of this virtual realm. My name is Kimberly Long and I'm an artist working primarily with wool and clay to create little creatures and tiny dwellings. Today in this video I'm going to show you how to create your very own woolly llama using wool right from right here in the Pacific Northwest and giving you options to create an ornament or leave it more as a figure. You'll learn some of my techniques and why the wool from reclaimed wool is my favorite to use for this llama of a different color. Let's get started. The materials in your kit include natural colored roving, colorful roving that has been dyed, a small amount of black roving, twine with a large eye needle, Felty needles, these are very sharp and have barbs on them, so be very careful with them. And a felting pad. This is the surface that you want to work on so you do not break your needles or damage your table today. Each step has already somewhat been done on my side. Because of this, you'll see different colored wool as well as some possible options with the direction you would like to take your piece. Please pause or rewind this video as needed. Your llama will probably take longer than the total amount of time on this video. Patience is key when needle felting. And this is the guy that we're trying to create today. The first step is to create the core. Consider it kind of like the stuffing in a pillow. It doesn't need to take full shape, it just needs to be the general shape. I use waste wool from a local mill in Oregon, and that makes my colored dyed wool, which is usually more expensive, to last a little bit longer. So to create the body, this is the most amount of wool that you'll be using at one time today. You wanna try to make a small cylinder probably no bigger than the palm of your hand. And you take your, one of your needles and you start poking the needle through the wool. What this does is it entangles the fibers to start sticking together. Again, we're working kind of for a cylinder shape. And you want to start off by using just a little bit of wool at a time because it's always easier to add and harder to take away. The ends, you would like to keep a little bit rough. Shape them just enough. When we leave the ends rough, it leaves the more options for it to be easier to attach the legs and the neck, all the other pieces that we're going to be creating. So again, we're just working to create the body of the llama right now. If you'd like to add a little bit more, make them just a little bit bigger pull your wool. Always pull the wool, don't cut it. The fibers work better when they are left together and they naturally want to break in certain spots and you want to work with what it naturally wants to do so you're not fighting it later on. So you continue to do this to shape the body. Again, this is what I'm talking about when I say you want to kind of tame the ends. These pieces that are flying away, let's work to get them tucked in just enough so they don't fall off or poke through the colored wool later on. If you are smashing too much and that looks like too short of a body, what you want to do is you can gently pull it and again about palm of your hand is what you want to shoot for today at this point. Next you want to take a little more of the wool and start creating the head. I like kind of pulling apart the different fibers to get them going in the same spot. As you can see I have different fibers from different animals 
And for the core, it doesn't matter as much. If I have longer fibers, I like putting them towards the center. If I have shorter fibers, I like moving them towards the outer piece. So what I mean by that is these are a little bit longer fibers. If you pull it, it takes longer to separate them. Where these are shorter, So take your longer fibers, and again, you're going to roll them up and start working to create the head of the llama. Take some of these fibers. You can use any of the wool roving that's the natural colored at this point to be creating the different pieces of your llama. the same idea as the body. Create a cylinder. You're going to create a lot of cylinders today, so you'll get a lot of practice in the shape. And as you start shaping the head, you'll kind of start to see what's more naturally a nose, maybe, or the back of the head. I kind of see this as the nose part, so I'm going to make this a lot neater, needle that in, because nothing's going to be attached to the nose. And I'm going to leave this rough and not as tightly together so that is easier to attach to the neck. Again, you want to loosely shape it and check your proportions also. If your head's too big or too small, you can add your wool with it. I kind of like going about half the body for the head because I know that I'm also going to be attaching the neck and I'm going to lose a lot of this. So about half the head to the body and we're good on the head for this point. Again, look for those loose spots. If you're seeing a lot of wool that's popping up like that, take your needle and tuck those in. Now the neck. I take a look about where I would want the head to be able to rest. And I like this side kind of as the back side. So that's going to go back there. And this is going to be his front. So I take the more roving, more than the head, but less than the neck, less than the body. So the neck is more wool than you used for the head, but less wool than you used for the body. And again, you want to roll it. And on the first pull that I grabbed, this was about it. And before I start putting the needle to it, I want to check it out and see if that proportion is about right. I'm pretty happy with that. If you need more, you can always pull more wool and add it to the spaces where you need. If the neck is coming out too long, that's okay because you can also take your needle and start shortening it. You do want to leave some rough pieces to attach it easily to the head and to the body. But if you go with your needle further into the wool without bringing it all the way out, you can shorten the wool, the core, you can shorten the core without losing too much of those rough pieces that you'll need to attach. Now we have the head and the neck should be coming together. Don't attach anything yet because we still have four legs and I bet you guessed it, we're going to do more rolling and trying to get some cylinders. So you can take and pull some more natural roving, roll it up. You don't want super long legs because we're going to make a really fluffy llama and just hit the legs will pop out the bottom just a little bit. If it is too long, you can also 
fold it in half the other way, or you can fold it the actual roving before you start rolling it in half and rolling it up. Decide how long you want your llama's legs to be. I can show you the finished guy. And as you can see, I just used a little bit. His leg is actually about that long, about an inch, inch and a half at most. And attached. And when you can cover him as legs, you'll see how to cover all of that. core is all about taking the fibers and just shaping them and the best way to shape them is just to get them a tangled mess a beautiful tangled mess And take your time, use patience. It saves your fingers for sure. And you don't have to poke all the way through the wool. You just have to poke enough to get the fibers that are out tucked in. So while you continue working on the last one, you can pause it here. I'm going to switch over to the next step that I've already completed to show you how to start attaching and covering with color. What you'll want to do now in the next step is to add the color. We're going to add the color to the head and to the feet in order to make it easier to work with once it is all attached. If we try to attach it first and then add the color, you're working around a lot of pieces that aren't necessarily needed at this point. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start with the head and you'll want to grab your colored roving and pull a tuft out. I like working with the colored roving and not cutting it. The natural way that it, the fibers lay together work a lot better and create a lot less work for you when you're trying to attach and needle felt it together. So now I'm going to take the colored roving, put it past the snout just a little bit and tightly wrap. If you tightly wrap, it's a lot less work than if you would try to loosely wrap at this point. And we want the, the head and the feet to be tighter than the rest of the body. The head and the feet don't need as much fluff. So you take your needle and you start using it to tighten and attach it to the core roving. And you'll just want to do this until that you are happy with the shape of the head. Again, you don't have to worry about too much about where you can see some bare spots or the roving just yet because we can go through at the final step and cover all those bare spots. 
You'll do the same for the feet, except for the feet, what I like to do is cover the foot first and go up and over. The wool is very flexible, so it's an easy medium to play with, and it's very forgiving. One thing, if you haven't started noticing yet, is with some of the wool and some of the colors, if you poke your needle all the way through like this, you'll also start seeing your core wool come all the way through. So when you start attaching the wool, you'll just want to poke it enough to touch the core. You don't need to go all the way through. You just need to get it to where you can feel the core. The reason I like using this colored wool the best is because the fibers are short. If you look at wools like Merino or some of the other rovings out there that they use for spinning, they make great yarn and they spin really well because they're longer fibers. But this wool has been created by Heidi at Reclaimed Wool and as you can see when I pull it, very short fibers are in there. There's also little balls of wool that you can see um, that are entangled already. That makes it really easy to work with and to cover fast. It's a wonderful wool for beginners. I love all of the colors that she has. They're very bright and happy and vibrant. I like how they're different hues and tones and all of them they're variegated some as well so i'm really excited that you get to be working with heidi's wool today again check her out at reclaimed wool so to attach we'll start with the head and the neck take whichever p side you would like to be the top of the neck i like this one and i place the neck over the bare spot on the head and I just use the needle to use all that rough wool from when we s shape the neck and just entangle it into the back of the head. If it's not the shape that you want yet, don't worry, we have lots of fluff to add. test if it is enough. You can gently pull. Feels okay. I don't like how this is really thin, so I'm going to push this up just a little bit and go very slow and very gentle. When you're working close to your hands, make sure you go slow. This is not a medium to be doing while watching TV or snacking. take this body and the neck and we see how best to attach it here so if your neck is really long you are more than welcome to take the neck and extend it towards the bottom but since mine seems to be a pretty good length I'm going to attach it right in the center Sometimes the legs show you which ones want to be the front and which ones want to be the back. So take a look at what you were able to shape and create. I'm going to do these two for the front and these two for the back. Look to see where your wool is covered the best. I have kind of a bare spot here, so I'm going to use that to attach it to the body. I attach it close to the back may not look completely in proportion yet, but that's okay because we are going to add the rest of the wool 
to cover up any of those spots. You can kind of take him and decide if that is enough of a step. If not, because you haven't touched it completely yet, you can pull it off and try again. If you find that your body is kind of lopsided, you can always add more roving to wherever you need to attach it to, which then makes it a little easier for the final step. The last leg is sometimes the hardest because the shape has been reshaped several times through the different legs, so just pay attention to what the body is looking like. So right now your llama should look something like this. And we'll head on over to the next step. So now that you have the head covered, the legs covered, and the body attached to all of the pieces, we're going to take the needle and the twine and make it into an ornament. If you don't want to make it into an ornament, you can skip this step. But if you are going to make it into an ornament, this is how I do it. I take it and place it through the bottom, right at the base of the neck, up to the top of the neck, and I feed the twine through. Because we didn't work or shape the core too much or work with it too hard, it should be able and easy enough to just push it through. Then from where it sticks out, you want to push it back close in, not in the same exact spot, but close to the same and come out close to where it went in. Again, pull. And you can leave your needle. So now you should have this loop up top. From here, I take the two ends, tie them in a knot. I do two knots. I do this knot on bottom and I feed it through. this little piece sticking out and that's okay for right now and then what I also do is I like to knot the top just for a place to cut if I want to make it a figure later instead of an ornament when you knot the top make sure to tie the knot all the way to the bottom so now you have those two you hang it it should be close to level if not, that's okay. Again, you can shape the wool once it's all done to make it level and hang the way you want it to. So now we get to add some fluff and keep shaping. This is where we get to use most of the colorful wool. So again, like I said, I was using different colors to show you what the different kits are out there. Um, this is the yellow, one of my favorites too. And to cover with the, to cover the core with this is really fun because you don't have to work so much and you can leave them as fluffy as you want. Take your needle and start attaching it to the body. Again, you can leave them as fluffy as you want. You can shape him. This is when he really starts getting into that main shape of a llama. You can take your wool and kind of attach it in different spots to make it look like he has the fibers that are fluffy and the fleece that's showing. Um, if the more you use your needle in one spot, the more of a line you create, as you can see. If you want to add a little bit of curls or things that look like the little curls and the waves of the wool, you can go through and start at one end and then bring it up and bring it around. It's a little bit like drawing, but with a much sharper pencil. Go ahead and keep covering him, especially at the base of the neck. This is where I like to take my time most, so I will show you this before we move on to the next step. I take a nice tuft of wool place it right on his chest 
be careful around the knots. Don't go too fast and when you poke your needle through the wool, pull it out in the same way. If, you tw if you're finding that you broke a needle already, maybe you twisted it when you were using it. And I like making them have a proud chest because mamas always look so proud. So keep working with the wool and the fluff and I will show you the next step. So this llama is a figure. I did not put the ornament string for him and that's okay because he'll be able to stand up on his own once I finish shaping him. And he has some of the fluff already covered. He's also all the way covered. I didn't add as much fluff to start, so now I'm gonna finish adding that. He's about covered as you would like him to be. We can start making the final details. That includes the tail, the ears, and the eyes. So you'll want to make sure you have plenty of your colorful roving left and your black wool. So let's start with the tail. I pull about that much wool and fold it in half leaving this side rough and working with this side to be the tail that shows. And I just continue to flatten that, connect it, tighten it. What you'll see is that all the wool that you're pushing through is pushing through all the end. The nice thing is you can go back and gently tuck those pieces back in. This is about the shape if you want it to be a little thicker of a tail, you can always take more wool, fold it over, you can also use your hand and your fingers to start shaping it the way you want. Once you're happy with the shape of the tail, you can start attaching it. I put it on the back side and use the rougher ends, tuck those in, and then once it's secure, I come through the top and blend that. If there's still too much of a line there that you are not happy with, you can bring more of the roving and add some fluff. That's about what you want your tail to look like. Again, you can reshape it. If you want a smaller tail, larger tail. Once it's on, you have a little more ability to side proportions and shape. So the tail is done. We can go on to the ears. You want to pull less wool off than for the tail. And again, it's kind of the same thing, but instead of using this side, working with the side, we're going to use this side to create a triangle. So on your needle felting pad, start tucking in those really rough edges. and form a triangle. I like them a little bit thicker than this, so I'm gonna, again, pull a little more off, fold it over, so it looks more like a square right now, and that's okay. I use the needle to start creating that triangle shape, as you can see. And then you can pull these rough ends in. To create the ear shape. The more you use your needle in one spot, the more of a line you create. So if you want to create that inside look of an ear, just go keep going around in generally the same spots. And you'll start seeing the ears shape form. 
because the fluff isn't exactly attached completely, we'll still be able to attach this without making this too rough on the ends. So once you have your triangle, you'll want to do that again. Again, take your colorful roving, fold it in half. You can use this now as kind of as a template. Just be careful not to attach them together. And you can do that by, once you have your shape outlined, you can come in and continue working with it. And again, tuck these rough bits in. them the side where you want them and I start placing them kind of at an angle to attach them. I hold them with these two hands these two fingers and then start attaching them loosely and gently. I work on the bottom first then I can come up to the top come up behind and attach them the back. The very last place that I work is the very top. are getting close to the core, attaching to the core, some of those fibers will reach it and make them very secure. You can always pull a little bit and see where you need to attach a little bit more. I need to work a little bit more on the bottom here because there's too much pull there. I pull it and that's better. So now we need to reshape his snout, kind of puff it out, pull it out and give him a little bit of extra fluff on top. So we use a little bit of this, place it on top. I love when they have their fluffy heads. And I start kind of blending where the ears were attached so there's less of a line. And then back. If the head is too flat on back, this is when you can take the time and add more shape to the back of the head. And finally, this is where your llama is going to get the most personality is through the eyes. So you wanna take just a little bit of the black roving and it is amazing to me how much a little bit can do to provide the personality. You can decide if you would like round eyes or smiley eyes. This guy has smiley eyes so I will make this one with one round and one smiley. So if you want round eyes, roll up the wool with a little bit of into a little bit of a ball with your fingers and then find where you would like to place it on your llama and just get the center first to attach it then you can take your needle and work the edges if it's too big or too small this is where you can really start to shape it so far that is the round eye if you want to do more of a smiley eye again take a small amount of the black wool instead of rolling that up into a ball roll it into a kind of like a line 
can fold it in half again. And then you can start at the corner, the inside corner of the eye. And just work with the center to start to attach it. Because once you get the center attached, you can go through and shape. And you can take more time in shaping the eye. And those are the two different eyes. And the last step is to go through and see how much roving you do have left. And if there's any extra spots that you want to add more fluff to. So I do want a little more on his head now that we're done working with the ears and the eyes. You can see his ears kind of took a little bit of a beating and if you don't want them sticking out as much you can start really adding the finer details and getting the shape the exact shape that you want this is probably what takes the most time that is the last step is just to continue working with your fluffy new friend one thing that i also do add is some fluff around the bottom of the ears to blend the neck give them a little bit of attitude, tilt their head. Even though we don't have the wire armature, you have some room to shape and move the wool as you need to. And there's your llama.